Hey guys, the game title is always at the top right corner of the screen within the first 10 seconds, every video. Some of you guys always ask me what game I'm playing and I ignore those questions because it's right there. Oh my god, Barry, Console Peasant Quotes is back. Well, Console Peasant Quotes never died. It's just called Fanti Consumer Quotes now and I get comments all the time of people asking me where this series went. If you've been missing out on these, just know this series isn't gone. It's just under a new name. And before you ask, yes, I did call this episode Console Peasant Quotes 21 just to catch the attention of the old viewers. I had a lot of people missing this series, but also because I was thinking this could be a special episode, an homage and goodbye to Console Peasant Quotes. And I've decided the way I'm going to do this is by taking the worst quotes I've ever debunked in this series and prove them wrong the old-fashioned way. By showing you. Enjoy. I added an extra CPU to my Xbox One through a mod. I did a spec test via my PC, and it found it was three times as powerful as the PS4. I removed it, but in a nutshell, the new dev kit will replicate the process, making it more powerful than the PS4. So one strangely common misconception is that hardware is somehow downloadable. This is a processor. This is RAM. This is a graphics card. Modding, in the sense he's referring to at least, is software-based, meaning the same way I cannot simply download a TV and put it in my living room, you cannot download a processor and put it in your Xbox One. And I love how he acts as though he had two processors in his Xbox at the same time. Motherboards in 2008 didn't have dual CPU technology. Uh, Barry? The Xbox One was released in 2013. I know. Sad, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. But the power lies in that OS. The reason why no PS3 emulators are created yet is because the OS in its raw form would require over 100 gigabytes worth of RAM to emulate, since the OS also has a physical architecture. The PlayStation 3 emulator has been created. Been out for a while now, actually. Oh yeah? Well, it probably doesn't run games very well. To be honest, yes, it still needs some work, but if you look here at this compatibility list, it will tell you the games that are running perfectly so far which still needs some work and which won't work as of right now. This emulator is being optimized and updated fairly regularly, and not only are games coming out finished almost every week, but all of your settings are tweakable and higher frame rate and visuals are definitely achievable. By the way, I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I'm doing just fine. What is so bad about PC is you have to be a nerd to use it, and I don't hang out with nerds because Xbox players are cool. Nobody plays competitive Call of Duty on PC. They only play it on Xbox. Plus, you can use gun R's on Xbox. Keyboard has too many keys to press, which makes you slower firing a gun. Why turn your camera with arrow keys when you can use a control stick? <sighs> I'm gonna show you something. This is a controller. This is my mouse. See what happens when I use my arrow keys? Yeah, nothing happens, because you don't use arrow keys to move. I think the reason this guy doesn't like nerds is because Nerds are intelligent, maybe? They know what they're talking about? Let me give you an example of a stupid sentence. I don't hang out with nerds because Xbox players are cool. I don't play games on consoles because the Earth spins counterclockwise. These things don't have anything to do with each other. Lastly, nobody plays Call of Duty competitively on PC because Call of Duty sucks. A friend of mine said it very well when she was talking about why she plays Call of Duty. She said this, I got Call of Duty for my Xbox 360 because I suck at shooters. I'm good at Call of Duty because it's a simplistic shooter that requires no skill to play. Consoles are better than PC, and you can upgrade console. I have a 770 in mine, and it's better than most gaming PCs out there. I can upgrade my parts whenever I want, and it's a lot more accurate with a remote than any PC player. See, as I demonstrated earlier, you are more precise with a mouse. You can move faster with it, you can lock onto anything you want as fast as you need to. This means that in a multiplayer game, you're actually up against other people's reflexes, not their aim assist. Seriously, no offense there, but aim assist is a must on controllers because they're not great aiming peripherals. It doesn't mean they aren't fun to use though. As for putting a 770 in your console, that card wasn't the most powerful card even when it was released. Even if you could somehow put it in your console, it doesn't automatically make the system better. To be honest, it probably would be bad for the console. I don't think developers take graphics cards into consideration when optimizing for console. But what cracks me up about this one is everything you described were the freedoms PC allows. And you acted like console was better because it could do what PCs have been able to do since forever. If you want those features you described, just get a PC. It really does sound like that's what you want here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I say go for it. A but console's architecture is better. I will play my Fallout 4 on Xbox One with 4K texture mods, foes, EMB, sweet effects, and mods to increase performance to 60 FPS and 1080p. Then you will see. 
PC Master Race, my you just lost your only advantage. Actually, PC gaming offers upgradability and backwards compatibility, using any peripherals I want to, free online, the use of multiple displays, but you're right. Despite all of these advantages, the only ones we actually have are mods and graphics. The cool thing about video games is even if your hardware can't handle it, you can just upgrade the visuals, the frame rate, you can add in any mods you want to. I mean, normally this stuff would cause slowdown, but no, not on consoles. Think of it like this. If I took my phone, modded GTA 5 onto it, and then modded the graphics to 4K, modded in 60fps, and added in those sweet effects and EMBs, it's the same thing. The phone can do it because I said so. You starting to see where the issues lie? Reason why PC gaming sucks. Every few bloody months, graphics cards need to be upgraded, as do vid cards, etc, <laughs> etc. Et Plus, the difference now between console games and PC games is now tiny. <sighs> this is a graphics card. This is a video card. This is a video card. This is a graphics card. Also, the difference between console games and PC games is not tiny. When your games run at half the frame rate, half the visual potential, I do have hopes for the newer console generations, maybe that gap will be smaller. But when you have an APU running your graphics, and you have a dedicated graphics card running your graphics, yes the APU can do some surprising things, but it's like if you put a dog in the water and a shark in the water. Yeah, they can both swim, but one was made for it. Fun fact, eyes can't differentiate past 17 FPS for the average person. Maybe 20 is the highest on record. 23.976 merely replicates motion blur on each frame roughly the same way we see it. Past 60 FPS in America and 50 FPS in Europe is completely unnecessary. Therefore, never buy a TV with more than 60 Hz refresh rate. It will make no difference because the frames will show up on the television, not film, at 30 FPS in progressive 1080p and 60 FPS in interlaced 1080i. So essentially, at 120 Hz refresh rate, you see each frame flash twice for no reason at all. In addition, electricity is not constant, instead coming in pulses of 60 times per second. That's what light use, and all electronics in America uses, from an actual film student who studied this. So I really dislike this guy, and anyone who says humans are so limited that we can't see above X frame rate. Let me read you an excerpt from this article discussing jet fighter pilots. It goes like this. The USAF, in testing their pilots for visual response time, used a simple test to see if pilots could distinguish small changes in light. In their experiment, a picture of an aircraft was flashed on a screen in a dark room at 1 220th of a second. Pilots were consistently able to see the afterimage as well as identify the aircraft. This simple and specific situation not only proves the ability to perceive one image within 1 220th of a second, but the ability to interpret higher frames per second. This is much, much higher than 60 FPS, I'll tell you that right now. Furthermore, Mr. I don't listen in class, when I play a video game, the first settings I run to are motion blur and FOV. FOV to turn it up, motion blur to turn it all the way off. Motion blur is, in video games, a setting that is made to simulate higher frame rates. All it does is blur the screen when you move, and I hate that. Frame rate and motion blur do not run hand in hand. They do in movies, but not in games. Okay, Barry, that's all fine and good, but the human eye can't see past 30 FPS because the universe runs at 30 FPS. Light travels at 30 FPS, so there. Okay, let's apply some logic to that, shall we? When you record a game at 1080p, you can rewatch that video at 1080p because it's the same as the source. If you record a game at 720p, you cannot watch it at 1080p, at least not natively. This is because the source was not recorded at that resolution. Same with frame rate. You cannot watch a movie at 60fps if it was recorded at 24. There is interloping and just like upscaling, it's not native. Now, with that information in mind, that I'm sure we can all agree on, if our universe supposedly ran at 30 FPS, how can slow motion cameras actually exist? Again, you cannot record a game at 60 FPS if it's running at 30. If our universe only runs at 30, why can people record with cameras that capture a couple thousand frames per second? Look, I know it's a malformed answer, but when you ask illogical questions, you can't always fight back with logical answers. Some people need you to fight on their level. So this next one is in regards to the PlayStation 4 supporting 4K. Okay Sony, for all of us who already have PS4s, release this as a software update that will add 4K support. On top of that, you're doing too much with PlayStation VR. Some of us can't afford new consoles, much less your bull PlayStation Plus membership you force us to buy to play online. I'm sure you can make a hardware exploit, just give in for once. Again, this is hardware, 
Sony cannot simply update hardware through mods, through patches, through anything. They physically have to make a new console to allow you the new features. I know I use analogies and illustrations a lot, but think of it this way. You buy a controller with five buttons on it. All of a sudden, a new controller comes out with six buttons. Your controller cannot magically receive that button through an update, a mod, a patch. It's physical. The lower the FPS, the more it damages the eyesight. I am a biology student, and this fact was included in a computer tech lesson. To simply put, lower FPS equals more damage to eyesight. So even when 30 FPS looks better in some games, for a medical side, it's way worse for your own health than playing the same game at 60 FPS. I could go deeper about this, but I made it as simple as possible. Go watch some IT channels if you don't believe. This fact is mentioned from time to time. See, I feel like this one is a rumor someone made to intentionally kill off that 30 FPS cinematic BS people spread around, and as much as I understand, I don't like fighting misinformation with more misinformation. For someone like me, I do indeed suffer from motion sickness, so the lower the frame rate, the worse it is for me, but most people are not like me and can handle even unstable frame rates no issue. As far as I've searched, there is no research done on this for me to even dispute, but I can say that people have been watching movies at 24 FPS for years and have had no troubles. The only way I can think that this would actually damage you is if you played a virtual reality game at a lower frame rate than 90. Trust me, I've been there. My friends have been there. Even my brother, who never gets motion sick, has played a VR game lower than 90 FPS and became ill. This is the only thing I can think that gives any credibility to this. Don't get me wrong, I see the intention. Getting people to stop believing that 30 FPS cinematic garble would be great, but not with another lie, please. We can't be dealing with any more of this frame rate crap. You're kidding, right? If you want a PC that at least deliver the same graphic than a PS4 or X1, you must pay at least 600 to 700, I say. And if you really want a stable frame rate with more graphics, at least a thousand. Buying a 2003 PC for 100 bucks will get you nowhere. Actually, it's easier than ever. When people ask me for a $300 PC, I tell them to go to their local PC shop, buy a $200 desktop with a decent CPU in there, then buy a 1050 or 1050 Ti and boom. Generally, these run about every multi-plat at medium high, medium low, which is about where consoles have been for a long time. The PC will also allow them to play their games at higher frame rates though, so win there, and as they go, they can upgrade if they feel like it. Not only is it practical, it's just as cheap as buying one console, and upgrading would be cheaper than buying a new console generation. There you go. Just as cheap from the get-go and cheaper in the long run. If money is your issue, this is your fix. I am PC user. I have been playing a lot PC games. It gets boring after three years of using PC. Also, PC monitor messed up my eyes so bad, now I look uglier thanks to PC. PC is not good for health. Also, many PC users have mental problems, family problems. Now I am into consoles. Consoles brings up Joy's family friends unlike PC ruins life. I am using Wii U now. <laughs> I have actually never had a PC monitor cause physical damage to my eyes, but a TV would have the potential to do the same thing. If the monitor exploded and a TV exploded, they could both mess up your eyes. If you stare at both of them for weeks on end, they could both mess up your eyes. This isn't exclusive to monitors. Despite that, you said PC is not good for health. However, my computer chair improves my posture more than my couch ever did. I for one don't have mental nor family problems. Now, I know this was a lot of me, 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 but he did come at this using absolutes. PC gamers have mental problems and family problems. It wasn't a simple, oh it caused me issues, no, everyone who games on PC has those issues. And I don't. Am I the exception that proves the rule? I don't think so. It's only $5 a month, 60 a year. If you can't afford that, you have bigger problems and it goes towards servers. Stupid ungrateful PC peasants. Look, if you want to pay to play games with your friends, that's fine. That's not the issue that I have. The issue I have is if you bought a console and complained about how dumb it was that your friends were locked behind a paywall, you'd get comments like, well, if you can't pay, you shouldn't be a gamer. So being a gamer is exclusive to those who can't shell out money for no reason? Uh, Barry, like he said, it goes to servers. No, it doesn't. I said this before, but when a developer makes a game, they are the hosts of said servers. Rockstar, Activision, Ubisoft, not Microsoft. That money goes into Microsoft's pocket for no other reason than they want the money and know they can have it by locking your friends away. That is why I hate it. LOL, consoles are betterer for competitive since they have same graphical settings while PC has not grass. While someone has a lot grass, you idiot. <laughs> Firstly, Grass does not affect how competitive a game is. Console versions of games do not have the same graphical settings, and when it comes to grass, 
there's almost always potentially more and or better looking foliage on PC. The reason I say potentially is because settings can be tweaked and adjusted depending on how much grass or not grass you want. 30 FPS on console games looks better than 30 FPS on PC. Here's 30 FPS on console. Here's 30 FPS on PC. See, this is like saying a movie in my Vizio TV running at 30 FPS looks better than the same movie on your Samsung TV also playing at 30 FPS. 30 FPS is 30 FPS. If anything, the graphics can be improved on PC, so even though my frame rate will suck, the game will still look nicer. Console is better because it has controllers, you idiot. Any and every controller I ever want. I didn't know much about PC, so I do some research. Titan X is one of the most powerful cards, but is only 12 gigabytes. PS4 is 500 gigabytes, and is coming out with a one terabyte PS4, which is double the power. Do a little research, and you debunk PC Master Race. Feeling shocked. This is easily my favorite quote of all time. Okay, this is a graphics card. This graphics card has 11 gigabytes of VRAM. This VRAM is quick thinking, no storage RAM, kind of like the RAM in your computer. This is a hard drive. This is where your games are stored. Games are not and cannot be stored on this because it's not a storage device. This hard drive is 4 terabytes of storage and runs at 7200 RPMs. The default storage in the PS4 is 1 terabyte running at 5400 RPMs. Less storage and slower? What a deal! I really do love these quotes. They'll keep me laughing forever. This series was always about teaching and learning and having a good laugh and it's not over yet. So long as there are fanboys on the internet that love sharing their opinions, I'll be here. Reading and laughing along with you guys. At 60 FPS, of course.